Please join me in the call to worship. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. When I sought you, O oh God, you answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon God's countenance and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in you, O oh God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Praise passes easily from our lips when it comes time to worship you. You are the source of all goodness as you bestow upon us bountiful mercy. When we feast our eyes upon your countenance, our faces radiate the flow of your glory. We lay before you now our offerings of praise and thanksgiving. Be pleased with our tokens, commitment to Christ who calls us, and may your spirit enhance our efforts as we worship your name. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 55. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. kids. Today I have an assortment of locks and keys. I have a giant one. And I also have a house key. The history of locks and keys goes back several thousands of years. Even earlier during Jesus's time, people wanted the ability to safeguard their possessions and store them in places where nobody else could get access to them. 
That's why engineers, designers, and scientists created first examples of locks and keys. Originally created using wood and other easily accessible natural materials, locks and keys offered small manner of protection against theft or intrusion. Locks and keys have managed to be a part our, of our everyday lives. We see them everywhere we go and we use them all the time. So why am I talking about locks and keys? Well, today's scripture comes from Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys to kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you have lost, whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. The word keys in the scripture represents tasks and responsibilities entrusted to his disciples. So Jesus' work will reach the all corners of the world. Re recipients of those keys are encouraged to one day give their key away to someone who needs the message more than they do. So the next time you get out your key to unlock your front door, or you open your gym locker, remember that you are entrusted to not lose that key and keep it safe and use it as it was intended. And just like Jesus' message, you must also not lose it and keep it safe and use his message as it was intended. Now today I'm going to leave you with a quote. Locks are never manufactured without a key. Similarly, God never gives problems without solutions. Only we need to have patience to unlock them. We thank our Lady just for reading our scripture this morning, uh, recorded in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 50 through 55. These are the words that form the basis of our message today, entitled, From Labor to Reward, From Labor to Reward. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for another opportunity to be gathered around your word. We pray, God, as we spend time in your word, that you would speak to us. And by speaking to us, we would be strengthened, encouraged, enlightened, and instructed. So God, have your way today. Speak to us. Your servant is open and ready and willing to hear. But God, don't let us be hearers only. Let us be obedient to that which you instruct us to do. That in our obedience, it is our lives that will be made better. God, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. God, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to the cross where thou hast died. God, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to thy precious bleeding side. And even again, God, give me the gift of preaching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All Saints' Days falls on a Sunday this year. 
John Wesley considered it one of the greatest celebrations in the life of the church. How irrational are they who doubt giving God solemn thanks for the lives and deaths of his saints? And in and said Wesley in 1756. Year after year, he commented on the celebration of the saints. It was a festival he dearly loved. We too love the remembrance of the saints of the church, those that have gone on before us, those that have walked among us and served God and set an example, those who have paved the way, those who have made up the part of our history. Many congregations have different traditions for this celebration, but it seems especially pertinent to observe all saints day this year it is possible that because of a pandemic and the safety regulations against gathering in large groups that there have been church members who maybe have died maybe not in our church due to the pandemic but all churches all over this country and all over this world or have suffered the loss of individuals due to COVID-19 and so Today gives us opportunity to honor those saints that have gone before, to honor those who have died in the struggle, to honor those who have been victims now of this pandemic. And we celebrate their lives and their places in our churches. If that is the case, All Saints Day can be an opportunity for a community to grieve together and to reclaim the hope of the resurrection, even as you acknowledge the legacy that remains from the blessed saints of the church. We look forward to the multitude that has gone on before us as promises of a beacon of light in our dark world. They are, they, these are they who have gone on before. Let us celebrate them, even as we honor them by the way we live. Hebrews 12, chapter, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. It is a great day when we remember people who believed in Jesus as their Savior and now have departed this world. All of us have people we remember who are already with the Lord. And actually, it is very important for us because we want to follow the steps of maybe our mother, our father, our uncle, our aunt, our brother, our sister, our husband, and our wives who are already with the Lord, who who were faithful, who walked among us, who set an example, who made the way and, and set the steps in which we are to walk in. Listen to the word of God in Revelation 7 and 9. After, I, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, and wearing white robes, were holding palms and branches in their hands, and they cried with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne and the Lamb. This sermon today talks about how in baptism we cross the threshold into God's family. And we become saints by virtue of our connection to Jesus. Many saints past, present, have given their lives because, because of their witness to the resurrection of Jesus. As the church celebrates All Saints Day, we remember all who accepted God's invitation to follow Jesus. Everyone who has crossed the threshold into the family of God can be rightfully called saints. We normally think of saints as those 
People who have led extraordinary lives like Mother Teresa, St. Augustine, St. Francis of Assisi, Peter, even Paul. We may think of Stephen, the first martyr, or other committed Christians whose faith in God did not spare them from the pearl of history and demanded their lives. Their eyes saw the gates of heaven. Their hope was placed in the heavenly life to come. And the Apostle Paul began many of his letters with these words to the saints in Ephesus, to the saints in Philippi. His point, we are all saints by virtue of our baptism in Christ by the Holy Spirit. They and we are not saints because we are without sin, for only one human being is was without sin, and that person is Jesus we are saints. We are pronounced holy by God because Jesus had taken away our sins by nailing them to the cross. And we are saints by virtue of our acknowledgement as Jesus as our personal Savior, as inviting him into our lives, allowing him to wash away our sins, adopting us into the family, and thereby making us saints. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw up everything that hinders and the sin that thus so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. God has given us heaven. It's a free gift. It is a sure reality. Jesus said, truly, truly, who believes in me has eternal life. The journey begins at the baptismal fall and continues until we are eternally wrestling in the arms of Jesus. We are to build on a foundation that the saints that have gone on before to have had laid by carrying Christ's message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. To those who need to, to hear those who need to be saved. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. We all need to be counted in that number. Like it said in the song when the saints go marching in. We are called into the kingdom to be laborers in his kingdom. We must work while day for night will come when no man can work. We have been given we have been given a mandate to make disciples. In Matthew twenty eight it says us says to us, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Christian, God has made us saints through the death on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the death. So that our response has to be to live and to be examples of the gospel. We are to carry and to be the example of the good news that makes a difference in the lives of individuals who accept Jesus Christ. And so we thank God for those brave men and women down through the years who have been faithful unto death to make it known the gospel. But we too, if we love Jesus, are those who belong to the family of God. We're not likely to be in those circumstances, but as followers of Jesus, we are called to be faithful to him in our daily living, at school, at work, at home, in our community. We are to set an example. We are now to be that living witness. We are to be the Bible that people are reading everywhere we go. And we're to carry the good news of the gospel to a dying world and tell them about a loving Savior who died for their sins. And if they accept him, their sins can be forgiven and they can be adopted into the family of God. Christians are not isolated individuals who live in the world alone. We are connected. We are connected to all of those that are around us. We have, begin, we have been given the, the great responsibility by God himself to make disciples. 
God said, it's not my will that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. So while we have the blood still running warm in our veins, the breath still in our body, we must carry the good news. We must tell a world that there is good news. In the midst of all the bad news, there is still good news that Jesus has come and that through him we can have eternal life. We are also remember that we make a difference and an impact on the people that we come in contact with, and we must make an impact for good. On All Saints Day, we remember those ordinary people who had extraordinary commitments, saints or ordinary Christians whose lives reflect the lives of Jesus. Those who have labored in the kingdom and have departed this life have gone from labor to reward. When the saints departed this life, their death was not the end. God has a message for you about death and is found in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter 54 through 57. When this perishable shall be clothed in imperishability, <coughs> and this mortal in immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory, and where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. God says to us clearly, I've won the won the victory over death. So even though we may experience death on earth, there is still a future. After this life, there is life. After this body has has gone to the dust, we're still, there still is a resting place in God. Jesus said, I've prepared a place for you. And where I am, there you can be also. After death, there's something more to come. Listen again to some of the words from John, who was inspired to write in the book of Revelations, from Revelations chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no longer any sea. He will wipe away tears from your eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain from the old order of things that has passed away. And he said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. To him who is thirsty, I will give him a drink without cost from the spring of, of the water of life, even when death occurs. Jesus can still do something. Death does not restrict Jesus from working, even from using the life of a person to transform others. Death is merely a stepping stone into eternity. Jesus made it possible for us to go through the doorway of death to death is an internal into the eternal. This year, some of us have seen loved ones die. Some of these people God used to introduce us to the Christian faith, to help us to explore the Christian faith, to nurture us in the Christian faith, and to encourage us in the Christian faith. But they've now gone on from labor to reward and now sit as um, the number among the great cloud of witnesses. On this Saints Day, there are two things I'd like to, you to think about in relation to these people. First, thank God that he's placed them in our lives. Thank God how they took the time to live and to share the faith, their faith with others. Secondly, remember you will meet up with them again in heaven 
hold on to the fact that as Christians, you join with them together in heaven to make up that great cloud of witnesses. We thank God for another All Saints Day in which we can give honor and that we can remember. And we can praise God for allowing people to pass through our lives. Let us now take what they've taught us and do a good work while we still here remain. Let the example that they set be one in which we follow in to carry the good news of the gospel. Jesus has set this example for us. He has finished the race and now sits on the right-hand side of God making intercession for us. We too must must continue to run our ways. We need to follow his example and that the other heroes of, of the faith And these examples encourage us to finish and to run our race. In closing, the songwriter says, Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. I don't know about you, but I'm living to live again. And when this life is over, I want to be in that number. I want to be in that number that goes marching in. Revelation 7 and 9. And after this I looked and behold a great multitude. And no no one could number from every nation of all tribes, people, and languages. Standing before the throne of the Lamb. Clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. And crying out with a loud voice. Salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And in closing, I want to offer a prayer. I want to offer a prayer for those who have gone beyond and, and for us who remain. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the saints throughout the ages, both great and small, who have revealed your word in faithfulness, who have enabled the proclamation of your redeeming grace in Jesus Christ to be passed from one generation to another. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, inspire us and encourage us to continue to witness to the message of the gospel and that it might continue to nurture faith for generations to come. This we ask in the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.